everybody, how's it going? Let's get the introduction out of the way. My name's Garden Sound, and this is Lila the Bird right here chilling on the stand. And if you would like my face on a shirt, link in the description down below. Bam! As with all my how to makes, this is going to be available to anybody who supports me on Patreon for $2 or more. That is a fucking steal. So if you'd like to go over to my Patreon page, links in the description down below. You can go ahead and grab this project file as well as any of the project files in my how to make series, including stems for $2 a month. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. All sorts of great things available on my Patreon page, such as mastering, mixing, lessons. If you want to take a lesson from your boy, I give those over on the Patreon page. Just go check it out, guys. I've done a lot of work on that page. I've gotten it to look great. It looks pro. Oh, go check it out. And just as a quick reminder, right now we're halfway to our goal of $500 a month. If we hit $500 a month, I'll be doing two videos per week. If we hit $1,000 a month, I'll be doing three, three videos a week. And if we go back up to the $2,000 mark, I'll be doing five videos a week, five days, every weekday, just like Garden Sound 365, except I'm going to be getting paid and, and, I'm, and I'm also going to be taking the weekends off like anybody who has a normal job. So I've had a lot of people request for me to do Carpenter Brute, um, and the only song I can actually stand by this guy is Turbo Killer. The reason I like his music in particular is because there's just no dynamic range. Um, so just case in point, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what I'm talking about if I just drop this into here. Oh my god, that waveform. It is a fucking sausage and we're going to talk about why that is and i'm going to be showing you how to compress things down to flat noise just like this oh just by the way guys i've had a shit ton of coffee that's why i'm all hype up right now i also haven't done one of these in a while so i'm a little nervous um so anyways uh here's how this works um my, my how to make series is pretty fun um what it is is i try to make this and i do these in one day um so i try my best to get a song um, from the way it currently is, which is, you know, somebody else's song. Um, and I try to remake it sound for sound uh, using techniques that I've learned over the years. And I show you how that's done. So I'm literally going to show you how to make it. This ain't your mama's tutorial. Nah. All right, so we've got Carpenter Brute loaded in here. The way this works is I have a key mapped on my keyboard where I can go back and forth like this. You can see the solo button lighting up. Isn't that grand? So what I'm going to do is uh, get this playhead working right now because we're not starting at the beginning of the song and Ableton's got to have that information or else it's going to flake out on me. All right, so we're going to go right here. Um, this is going to be loud, by the way, uh, going back and forth between Ableton and this. There's also a good chance I could be copyright slam a rude um, for doing this kind of thing. So um, if you're watching this and there's an ad running on it on this video, chances are I'm not getting that revenue because doing these kind of like how to make tutorials requires me to play the song. Um, so uh, th again, that's just one more reason why Patreon is so fucking important for this channel. All right, let's see if we can get a tempo on this bitch. I'm going to turn this song down quite a bit too because god damn. Okay, looks like it's at a really odd tempo which doesn't surprise me. It's 147. It's so bright. The mix is so fucking bright. I am so excited to be doing how to makes again, you guys. You have no idea. It's taken me a while to work up my courage to do this again. So I think what we're going to start with um, is this main drop section here, and we'll work backwards because this is sort of um, more or less the same thing, this beginning section. Oh, come on. You play the song. It'll help. That's sort of um, like the same sort of material sonically that's going on here. God, and you know what I gotta say, um, before we get going any further, is the drums in this song and the drums in Carpenter Brute's music, they kind of do kick ass. I can't fault the man for some good ass drums. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get those started, and they're gonna be this kind of splatter technique that I've used before on like the Dead Mouse video. But what we really need is like this trench sort of like, like industrial kind of vibe. I'm going to just go ahead and grab some of these from Mr. Bill's sample packs. Um, for those of y'all who don't know, Mr. Bill gives sample packs away on his website. Um, for people who subscribe to his Ableton Ear um, options, you guys need to go check that out. It's live.mrbillstunes.com. Ooh, that's nice. This one's going to be kick. And I'm going to put these buses inside of another bus and call this drums. Cool. So let's go ahead and get some levels set and mix these two things together. Um, I'm going to be doing some quick cuts just to make sure this video doesn't get too long and boring. So here we go. Uh, before we get going with that, I'm just going to go ahead and throw a safety limiter um, on this master channel just because uh, Carpenter Brute's music gets a bit noisy and loud quickly and I just don't want to hurt my eardrums. So we're going to go boom, psh, dum, boom, psh, dum, dum, psh, dum, boom, dum, psh, dum. So it's going to be like boom, dum, psh, dum, boom, psh, dum, like this. There we go. All right. So let's get this looped up. Get it looped up, boy. Um, and I'm going to mix these snares in. Uh, let's also figure out what key we're in because that's going to come into play with the drums. 
Dan on do do dan on. But that's right, right? Ban on do do dan on. It's F. Interesting. F. It's an odd key for electronic music. All right, perfect. So they're all relatively in tune uh, with each other in that F um, minor sort of vibe. Um, the next thing I want to do is get these snares and just kind of glue them together with a little bit of glue compression. Um, you can use Live's glue compressor for this, which is a great glue compressor. It's why it's called that. Um, so what I want to do with this is just make sure I'm barely hitting the needle a little bit further, a bit less. Okay, so it's gonna be like negative thirty point five for our threshold. We want a bit more attack, a uh, release automatic ratio down to two. Um, we'll turn the soft clipper on and we'll turn the makeup up until it sounds loud enough. It's bust the entire thing with drum bus. Um, I'm gonna turn my drive on hard and I'll probably just put it on like 7.5 because this, this drive uh, feature really does kind of slam things. Um, then what I'm gonna do is turn the dampener all the way up to 20 kilohertz so I'm not actually getting any of that I'm um, getting any of those frequencies out because I again I do want to manipulate all the frequencies here. Um, turn my frequency for the for the um, I don't know what you call that. I just know that it kind of makes the drums sound very way much more louder, right? The carnage, the carnage treatment. I, I don't. I wish I knew what that does. Somebody leave me a comment below. And let me know what this does. I just know that I'm supposed to make this be the key of whatever the fuck I'm working on. All right, comp on, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn this up until we can hear enough transients in these. <laughs> Turn the dry down to like 65. Put this through a limiter as well, just to make sure we're not blowing anybody's head off. So let's see, how close did we get? All right, so our kick has a little bit too much high in it, so I'm gonna roll a bit of that off. Um, and we'll do that this way. Just a different kind of kick. Let's redo our sample selection here. I don't think I'm using the right sample. Um, it's more of like an acoustic kick, which is kind of weird. Um, so let me go back to my Ableton samples here. Again, I'm going to use one of Mr. Bill's samples. That'll work. Now let's apply a bit of an EQ to it. Um, and we are going to dip like one kilohertz here and increase the size of the boom on the back end. So. Go ahead and uh, work on this snarly bass noise. No, no, da, da, no, no. Let's see if I can get the MIDI written out first. All right, so basically, what we've got going on here is uh, two oscillators. One of them is a um, sort of a sign sync. The other one is a just straight up um, <laughs> square wave. And we're basically rubbing them against each other with the sync just being slightly off on this saw. Cool. Now I'm going to put it through hard clipper, which is going to basically, that's the opposite of soft clipper. <laughs> just going to make it way more, very, very way more louder. I'm doing the carnage thing a lot today, guys. I'm sorry. It's such a meme. All right. Now what I've done is I've put a bit of um, dimension expansion on this. I'm not going to even touch the filter. Um, I might be, I might do some sort of a band pass and see if I can make it like, you know, a bit more snarly, but that'll probably defeat the purpose of the bass. So I'm not going to do that at all. Actually, we're going to leave this filter alone. The next thing I'm going to do is put this through a bit of EQ eight, not echo. God damn it. Um, and just increase the brightness of it slightly. Cool. Now I'm going to put it through a saturator. I'm going to put this on wave shaper mode and drive it a bit hard with the soft clipper turned on. That's the important part. And stick another limiter on the other side of this thing to make sure I don't blow my fucking eardrums out. All right, here we go. So I've got this snarly ass bass that I've made, and uh, I'm gonna start to uh, sidechain the fuck out of it. I'm gonna grab the in input sidechain from the kick. Um, I don't feel like doing a click track, because I don't feel like it. 
There you go. All right, uh, 10 millisecond look ahead. Let's see if we can get this thing set up correctly. And his is way wider than that. So I'm actually going to stick a plug in on this called wider. This is a free plug in. I will put a link to this in the description below. No, that is vocal doubler. That's also a free plugin, but we're not going to use that one. We're going we're gonna to use wider. Here we go. Okay, and I'm also going to put one more plugin on here that might reduce the um, weird stuff I'm hearing. And this is Gain Reduction Pro. This is from Joey Sturgis. Let's see if this helps at all. I'm going to do two of these now. This is just going to be my sub, actually. I'm going to have a duplicate channel here, and this one's going to be mine. Um, so we got the drums and we got this bass pretty much laid out. Uh, the next thing I want to do is kind of listen for other synthesizers and other noises. And then once I've got the noises and sort of like the basics figured out, I'll go through and like form it out or compose it. Uh, excuse me. All right, so it takes, it takes a, a short journey here um, on some sort of melodic BS. So let's grab this and we'll figure out what the, what the notes are uh, respective to it. Um. All right, let's do that lead and fine, fine. I'll do this one in the serum. This one's for the serum kids. All right, let's go in here. <clears throat> Here's the line pretty much all finished. Let's take a listen to it without the song. That one's going to have a bit of pitch bend on it. God damn it, Ableton and your stupid automation windows. Cool, now let's add a bit of the super saw kind of thing that we're going for with this song. pretty close here with this noise. Um, we're gonna call this one the Super Saw Boy. Super Saw Boy. <laughs> Adjust the automation curve. To do that, I'm just gonna grab it and drag it back. It does some sort of a cool flourish right here, which we'll write out real quick. Close enough. Okay, so basically we got this little organ thing to figure out from the first part as well. Uh, some toms, some cymbal stuff, and um, this snarly bass line needs a run up now. It's it's a bit of a different line. So earlier it was. Bum, bum. 
bum, bum, bum. It's changed. The chord progression has changed a little bit. So we need to fix this. Um, and then I say we go back to the beginning and work from there and then fill in the symbols. I think we probably got about 30 minutes left on this song total. That organ's pretty much throughout the entire song now that I'm hearing it a second time. All right. Let's add a mini track in here. Uh, this one's going to be the organ. So we're going to rename this organ. Gospel and Church. Do full great. I'm not sure what that sounds like, but we're going to try it out. <laughs> That'll work. All right, there's our organ part. Jesus, I thought that was gonna be a lot harder than it actually was. It needs to be more churchy. It's not quite churchy enough. It's too, it's too jazzy. I've got to have a good organ in here somewhere. Ooh, what about um steam pipe? <laughs> duplicate the track and put contact five back on it um, and go back to the organ patch I had a minute ago because I think these two blended together would be pretty convincing man of all things I didn't think it'd be the pipe organ that would stick me like this <laughs> I wonder if there's a uh, convincing pipe organ in uh, massive god wouldn't that be funny no That's 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 our combo right here is these two organs. So there is a bit of guitar in here for sure. I'm hearing it now. Where did I see a choir? I swear to God, I saw a choir earlier. Like while we were looking for the, it was it was while we were looking for the church organ. I saw a good choir. I I, I want to say it was uh, FM8. I really do. Like hold on a second. Back to FM8. Ah, choir. Um, let's try using expand actually, which sounds dumb, but this plugin sometimes comes in in the clutch, so we'll go with this one. Vocals, ah, here we go. Expand. This synthesizer was a dollar. That's exactly the sound I'm looking for, is that kind of fake-ass choir noise. Get a good hi-hat in here. We gotta get some toms in here too, motherfucker. Next is toms. Tom high, tom mid, tom low. My three brothers. The three toms. Alright, this is gonna be our hi hat. Let's get a good hi hat in here. Definitely a crash symbol, so we need to get a good crash. Again, VEC is good for this. It's kind of that um, mid 2000s sound. All right, so we're gonna get these toms in here. And once we've got the toms, um, I'm gonna work on like the fills at the very beginning of the piece and at the very end. Um, so basically from here on out, uh, it's just gonna be like a time lapse and a cleanup process. So I think I'm gonna shut the camera off and just work on this with the screen flow. Hey everybody, it's Gardner from the future. There's two things that I missed that I wanna go over while this time lapse is happening. Uh, first of all, the song that's playing behind the time lapse is my recreation, and I'm going to be putting a link to this to a separate video in the description down below if you'd like to hear the full recreation. The two things I'd like to go over here are with the Snarls Barkley, right? The uh, lower kind of gnarly basses. There is something I figured out during the time lapse, and that's that Carpenter Brute does have an LFO on a low pass filter here. Um, you can see I've mapped that to LFO 5 in Massive, um, and then I'm uh, modulating just a bit of the uh, top range of the cutoff and it's just enough to give it some sort of a rhythmic kind of pulsing sound um, I did notice that was on there I tried a few different methods to achieve the noise and this was the one that was most accurate you might have heard me say at the very beginning of this video that Carpenter Brutes music doesn't have a lot of dynamic range and while that's true I do want it to be understood that I believe this is a artistic and stylistic decision 
and has actually nothing to do with him being an amateur. I'm not accusing Carpenter Brood of being an amateur. This is definitely a stylistic choice. And I want to go over how that's done. So I've actually mixed this into the limiter pretty hot. Uh, all these tracks, you know, of course, except for the demo track here, come out to around uh, negative one decibel, which is really hot going into a master channel. Um, and what I've done is taken Ozone 8 and boost the, boosted the lows and highs, kind of scooped the mids out a bit, um, widened it a bit with the stereoizer, uh, skipped the maximizer, and I've actually used Pro L2 as my limiter here. And the reason for that is because Pro L2's limiter is very clean sounding, so I can really push the gain. In fact, you can see here, I've pushed 10.6 decibels of additional gain into the limiter, um, and it still sounds pretty good. So uh, you definitely get what you paid for here. You could use Ableton's default limiter. I mean, it will work. It's just, just not going to sound as good as Pro L2's limiter. So I just wanted to go over that. Um, again, we're pushing a lot of gain into the limiter, and that's how we're getting that sort of limited, crushed, distorted sound that Carpenter Brute is known for. Okay, enjoy the rest of the time lapse. Gardner, why are you wearing a different shirt? Why is it a different day of the week? Why do you look more disheveled because you didn't shave last night? I wasn't sleeping very well last night, so I'm just, you know, kind of holding it together today, my dudes. Fucking Nicolas Cage on a sequin pillow. This was sent to me by Ben Burns. You're the shit. Thank you. Right there. Hell yeah, Nicolas Cage on a pillow. Pillow Nick. It's like Pickle Rick except less autism. Here we are, guys. It's all done. It took me a few days to get this done because of other obligations, but no big deal. So by the time this comes out, I think it'll be Monday or something like that. So it's like, oh, this is Thursday, the Thursday before the Monday this comes out. Man, release schedules are weird. Um, anyway, uh, if there's anything I missed in here, let me know. And as always, this is going to be available on Patreon for those of you who'd like to take this part project apart for yourself. Um, and see how it works. I'll also have stems uh, included along with the project just in case you don't have um, a plugin that I have or something like that. Um, you will need a whole host of plugins like um, FabFilter Pro L2 um, and FabFilter Pro MB. Um, and I think those are the only two like expensive plugins that I use. I think everything else is pretty affordable. Oh, ozone, you'll need ozone, at least ozone elements, because I did use the um, expander and um, stereoizer uh, part of that to, to make it sound like it does. But I want to go over what I've done to this since I last saw you, which was just this big time lapse, right? Um, so I've added vocoders and I've added guitars, um, like I recorded them in. Um, and you can see here that they all have their own groups here. And the way I've done them is pretty simple. The guitars are very straightforward. Um, it's just, you know, my electric guitar running through some compressors that are outboard. Actually, it was running through my Joe Meek 3Q. Um, and then it comes through a guitar rig. Um, uh, just, just Actually, it's the default preset. Like, this worked out perfectly uh, for the guitar uh, parts that I wanted. Um, the other one has this acoustic shimmer plug-in. It's also a preset from Guitar Rig. Uh, so we're running through outboard compression into guitar rig. That's all we're doing here with the guitars. Pretty standard stuff. Again, Pro MB is right here. I'm um, doing a little bit of expansion and a little bit of compression. Uh, this is just a multiband. It's just a fancy looking multiband. Um, real easy to use though. I picked it up recently and I love it. Uh, the expander on it's amazing. So um, I also, I've also got this fake choir, um, which I've made out of expand. Oh, we already talked about that. We already talked about that. The vocoders were a little bit more complicated. I decided that the sound he's getting is a blend of two different styles of vocoding. One is using a saw wave from Massive um, as, a, as an external modulator on the vocoder here. But other than that, the presets um, that I used were just EQ8 with some wonky curves um, and six seconds uh, here with 10% um, on uh, the dry wet knob just to make sure that I get a teeny bit of reverb but not too much. Um, and then again, saw wave and organ. And the organ I used uh, was the one from FM8. It's actually a duplicate of the pipe organ that I used earlier. Um, so there you go. That's how the vocoders are done. Um, and from there, uh, I what did I do? What else did I do? From there, it was just like a matter of processing um, and mixing, which that 
process is pretty standard. Uh, I, I don't do a mix down anymore, meaning I don't bring it all the way down and then mix it back in. I just push it into the limiter um, after I set it for my target loudness threshold. Um, and, you know, from there, it's just like pushing it in until it sounds good. That's going to take care of it for this episode. Um, appreciate you guys watching. If you liked this, go ahead and click like. If you want to see more stuff like this, click subscribe. I'll be putting this over on the Carpenter Brute subreddit. So if you're here from there, hey, how's it going? My name's Gardner. I do a lot of shit like this. If you appreciate it, hit subscribe. More to come. Special thank you to all of my patrons, everybody at the $10 and above level, and everybody who pitches in at all, from $1 all the way to $100. You guys are my life blood. Thank you. You're the reason this show gets produced. Keep on keeping on. But as always, my name is Garden Sound, this is Lila the Bird, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>